Math 31, welcome to example 12. Here we're going to take a look at continuously compounded interest. So in examples 9 and 10, we looked at a type of savings account where you had interest compounded n times a year, right? We had this formula where you were getting interest paid to you n times per year. We're going to swap that out with continuously compounded interest, which means you're getting interest every millisecond of every second of every minute of every hour of every day you're just getting interest on interest on interest all right so let's look at the setup if p dollars are deposited in an account paying an annual interest rate of r or paying paying an annual rate of interest r compounded continuously for t years then the compound amount a in dollars on the deposit is given by the following formula and so we have A is our current amount, P is our initial investment. You can see that the base of our exponent became a little bit nicer. It's not that one plus R over N to the NT, it's just this E. And instead of NT, we have R over T up here. So when things are compounded continuously, our base turns into E. So let's read through this problem. All right, it's the same setup that we had in example 10, right, when we had, well, not example 10, excuse me, in example 9. But if you'll recall, in example 9, we were getting interest compounded weekly, and we wound up with $3.6 million. Like, that was pretty sweet. But I want you to see that we're going to end up with a little bit more, because in example 12, we're going to compound continuously. So you're getting more interest on your interest. So still here, we have a person investing a thousand, not a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars at a 12% interest rate per year. But this time you see it's compounded continuously. How, what will the value of the vet investment be in 30 years? Well, again, my P is a hundred thousand, right? My R, it's 12%, but I'm gonna write it as a decimal 0.12. And I'm gonna leave that money in there for 30 years. All right, so let's see how much money we wind up with at the end. So what is my end amount? You'll hear this equation referred to as the PERT equation because P-E-R-T, it sounds like the word PERT. So let me plug in my numbers. I'm gonna have 100,000 times E to the R times T. And then it's a matter of plugging this into our calculators. So let's see what we had here. If I clear this out, I'm gonna have 100,000 and then I'm going to do E to the R times T. And I'm going to put both the 0.12 and the 30 in parentheses so I make sure that they're both up in the exponent. When I hit enter, you can see we get a pretty large amount, just like we did in example 9. But this time I have $3,659,823.44. So let me go ahead and write that. We have $3,659,823.44. Six hundred fifty-nine thousand eight hundred twenty-three. Oops, eight hundred twenty-three dollars and forty-four cents. And if you'll recall, and I'll, I'll just put this up here so we can compare and contrast. In oops, in example nine, we had three million six hundred forty-four thousand six hundred seventy-five dollars and eighty-eight cents. So let's just look at the difference between those two. If I take this number and I subtract out 3644675.88, you can see that with continuously compounded interest, you actually earn about $15,147 more dollars over the life of that savings account. And admittedly, that's over 30 years, but I'll take an extra 15,000. All right, so there's your look at continuously compounded interest. So if you ever see the phrase continuously compounded, you're going to use the PERT formula. If you see any other compounding, and again, we did two examples of this. We had compounded weekly, and then we had compounded quarterly. When you have different compoundings, other than, I should say, when it's not continuously compounded, then you're going to use this equation, which will have a different base. All right, so with that, we're going to head over to our last example, and we're going to take a look at half-life problems. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.